We will now transition into Sophia's care during her time in inpatient rehab. We will look at her occupational performance areas of concern, long-term and short-term goals, problems caused by her diagnosis, intervention approaches and frame of reference, applicable evaluation assessments, intervention activities, and service delivery applicable to this stage of her care. Sophia's areas of occupational performance that are of concern in this setting are her ADLs, including grooming, upper and lower body dressing, transfers, and toileting, and a few IADLs, such as cooking and housework, to better prepare her for returning home. While in inpatient rehab, Sophia's long-term goal is to be independent in ADL and transfers, using adaptive equipment as needed and adhering to all HIP precautions before her discharge. Short-term goals include correctly recalling all HIP precautions when asked by her fourth treatment session, completing lower body dressing with minimal assistance using adaptive equipment by her fifth treatment session, and completing a toilet transfer independently, adhering to all HIP precautions with only one verbal cue for safety by her seventh treatment session. Sophia's hip replacement and right humerus fracture have affected many aspects of her life, including performance skills, performance pattern, and client factors. These will all be addressed during her rehab. Performance skills affected include her process skills and motor skills, as she has difficulty using new tools and often misplaces them. Her motor skills are affected as she has difficulty in the areas of stabilizing, coordinating, and enduring. Sophia's habits and routines have also been affected, as she needs to resist her normal habits of donning and doffing clothing due to her fractures, and her shower routine will be changed because of her hip precautions. Client factors that have been affected from her fall and early signs of dementia include strength, range of motion, endurance, and global mental functions, including orientation, temperament and personality, and energy and drive. These will all be areas of focus during her rehab. Intervention approaches that will be used with Sophia include Establish Restore, as she will be working to restore her skills of strength, range of motion, and mobility, and Adapt Modify, as she will work on finding ways to revise her current activity demands to support her occupational performance using adaptive equipment and new techniques. The frame of reference chosen for Sophia is the task-oriented approach. This approach emphasizes an interactive, dynamic process of client factors context, and environment to promote occupational performance. Practice and exploration help find solutions to motor deficits. This frame of reference takes into account many client factors, including musculoskeletal, neuromotor, and cognitive perceptual disorders. This frame of reference is great for Sophia, as we are looking both at motor and cognitive deficits, and will be focusing on accomplishing tasks independently, practicing and exploring new ways to complete these tasks so she may resume the functional skills needed to return home. Assessments that may be used with Sophia in this setting include the COPM to better understand how Sophia feels and concentrate on what she wants to work on, and the ESPT, looking into her executive functioning before she returns home independently. Three intervention activities that Sophia will start with in inpatient rehab are precaution education, lower body dressing, and transfers. For precaution education, Sophia will be given a cheat sheet of HIP precautions and will be taught the importance and purpose of these precautions. Grading this activity will include first cueing Sophia to look at her cheat sheet, leading to quizzing her on her precautions without any cues, relying on her to remember to use the cheat sheet if needed on her own. The activity takes into account Sophia's cognitive decline includes her current environment situation and promotes problem solving, all fitting with a task-oriented frame of reference. Lower body dressing will include practicing donning and doffing socks, shoes, and pants using hip kit equipment. The activity will be graded by starting with socks and moving to pants and shoes as Sophia improves. Maximum assistance will first be given by the therapist and this assistance will be weaned through the process. This activity is task-oriented, combining client factors with her current environment and promotes problem-solving with her motor limitation to improve occupational performance. Her last initial intervention activity will be working on transferring from her wheelchair to the toilet, adhering to all HIP precautions at all times. 
Sophia will begin transferring with assistance, and as she progresses, she will transfer not directly from her wheelchair, but will walk to the toilet using her walker. This activity is task-centered and combines relevant client factors, promoting occupational performance and independence in toileting, keeping to the task-oriented frame of reference. While in inpatient rehab, Sophia will be receiving both occupational therapy and physical therapy services. Occupational therapy will take place in Sophia's room as well as in the rehab gym. She will receive OT two hours each day, 90 minutes in the morning and 30 minutes in the afternoon. Sophia has returned home and is receiving occupational therapy home health services. Here is a snapshot of Sophia's Occupational Therapy Home Health Continuum of Care. We will focus on her occupational performance areas, long-term and short-term goals, problems caused by her diagnosis, intervention approaches and activities, as well as her service delivery. Areas of occupation that will be addressed are her ADL of Functional Mobility, her IADL of Driving and Community Mobility, and social participation and leisure involving going to church and gardening. Sophia's long-term goal is to navigate around her home and community safely, using assistive devices as necessary, 100% of the time before discharge. Sophia's short-term goals include walking up her stairs to her bedroom using the handrails four consecutive times adhering to all HIP precautions within four treatment sessions, transferring into and out of her shower using a tub bench while following HIP precautions two consecutive times within three treatment sessions, and participating in community activities safely, such as going to church or gardening, two times before discharge. Sophia's endurance has been affected by her total hip replacement and fracture. Her cognition has also been affected by her dementia. Her home is a barrier to her recovery as there are steps she has to navigate in her home. Her diagnoses have also caused problems with activity demands, such as social demands, sequencing and timing, and required actions and performance skills. Gardening has become a challenge for Sophia. She has a hard time remembering what to purchase from the store and has trouble physically completing the gardening activity. Driving has also become a concern. She finds it difficult to correctly sequence the steps needed to drive. Her fractures and dementia have also affected her ability to recognize unsafe situations. Using the multi-contextual frame of reference, intervention approaches to Sophia's care include adapt, modify, and prevention. The multi-contextual frame of reference addresses the dynamic nature of cognition and how participation in occupation is influenced by personal factors, the occupation being performed, and the environment in which it takes place. It aims for clients to generalize strategies learned in therapy and to transfer these techniques across new situations. It emphasizes the practice of skills and context. Sophia's home will be adapted to help her remain safe. Task sequences will be simplified and reminders will be left to help Sophia complete tasks. She will be educated in safety in her home and community to prevent falls and to work on her cognition. Assessments used with Sophia in this stage of her recovery include the SAFE to assess her fall risk, the ACLS for cognition, and the OTDORA to assess her driving capabilities. Sophia enjoys activities such as going to church and gardening, both of which require global mental functions to carry out the task. By participating in these meaningful activities, Sophia will be engaged in tasks that work on her memory, orientation, cognition, motor skills, process skills, and social interaction skills, which are all affected by her dementia and healing fractures. Intervention activities for Sophia will include navigating the stairs in her home so she can get to and from her bedroom. She will start with close supervision and eventually be able to do this independently and safely. In the bathroom, Sophia will work on transferring into her tub bench and bathe while using the grab bars as necessary. She will st start this process with close supervision and then eventually do it independently. Once her fractures heal, she will shower independently using the grab bars without the use of a tub bench. We'll work on Sophia's cognition by having her go to the gardening store and purchase items necessary to garden. The therapist will start with verbal and visual cueing to help, but as Sophia progresses, the therapist will give less and less assistance. Sophia will, al will also practice driving around her neighborhood safely. 
She will start small and eventually practice navigating her neighborhood, using an assistive device in her vehicle to remind her of her location and traffic laws. Sophia will receive OT services from an OTR in her home or in the community one hour a day, three times a week, for six weeks. After six weeks, she will be reevaluated to see if a continuation of services is warranted. This is Sophia now, rejoicing over her improved occupational performance brought about by her time spent in occupational therapy. Hooray! Hooray!